Well, thank you everyone for coming to our Sunday worship service. I hope, I'm very grateful actually that this morning is a wonderful day. Oh my goodness, if I couldn't choose a better day, better temperatures, I know that I'm not going to die out here sweating. This is a wonderful breeze outside. So thank you so much everyone for joining. Uh, please feel free if you have brought your own chairs to come out and uh, listen to the worship service outside. Uh, that we do ask for your safety and the safety of others as well. That if you are outside your vehicles or going to come out to the lawn or wherever, that we, you do keep your masks on just for an abundance of, of caution. Uh, just, yeah, uh, just as I'm wearing my mask right now, uh, just because probably it's unnecessary, but I would much rather be safe than sorry. So. Again, we ask that out of respect for others and our own health and being good stewards of the life that God gave us, that you put your masks on if you are outside your vehicles. Well, it's wonderful to see everyone. It's wonderful to see everyone in Facebook joining. Kathy, Dory, Vern, good to see you. Uh, my comments aren't loading right now on my screen properly so my apologies if I did not say your name to greet you also uh, th greetings to everyone joining via zoom uh, yeah I can't figure out a way to access this zoom thing uh, on my screen as well but uh, good morning uh, for the people in zoom and also good morning to everyone here I see some people in the lawn nice nice and I also see some people in their cars, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. It means a lot to me and it finally feels really like I'm doing worship together uh, because everyone here is physically here. So thank you so much. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, as the announcement screens uh, a flow, uh, please. Uh, again, we do need more helpers uh, with the worship service. So if you are willing to help, uh, and uh, if you are interested in any of these streaming things, please feel free to contact me uh, so that we can set something up. Also, uh, if you need a bulletin or if you need someone who needs a bulletin, then please contact Linda so we can send one out to you. Uh, there is an offering basket in the back box here. Uh, so feel free uh, anytime if you would like to uh, give an offering. Uh, we should have moved it up front, but uh, just because of the hectic nature, it's in the back right now. So please, uh, and even after service, uh, it's okay. Uh, please uh, feel free to leave uh, it in the offering box. Oh, Emmerich, thank you. Could you leave it like up front, up front? There's bulletins here as well. So for those who are here in the parking lot, uh, if you need bulletins, uh, then please uh, feel free uh, to take some bulletins or Emmerich will be there to do it. Thank you so much for helping Emmerich. All right, uh, also uh, announcement is there is a Holy Spirit uh, gathering uh, that is sponsored, uh, that the duoses are helping to coordinate so if you want to participate in the Methodist Holy Spirit Fellowship, please feel free to do so. It's for free and it's a webinar. Uh, I think sadly a lot of times in our faith journey, we, uh, we kind of forget the work of the Spirit. Uh, we just think that people who believe in the Holy Spirit are these folks who just believe in weird things, but really, it's the power of the Spirit that we need to understand and we need to know uh, for us to really enjoy our life in Christ. So please, I would like to invite everyone to join in the Methodist Holy Spirit Fellowship uh, to get a better grasp of who God is. Well, I think everyone is settled uh, for the most part. So we will start our worship service. My apologies to those who are in online, joining via online. Uh, because this is a new worship service, it is taking a little bit longer for things to uh, get settled. But it's wonderful. And at the end, hopefully I can lift my 
uh, surface up so that everyone in Zoom can see what is going on outside as well, or we might actually turn the camera around so people know what is going on. It is a wonderful sight. I am so grateful and so honored and so blessed and so humbled to be here just with everyone's presence here right now. I would like to welcome everyone again to our Sunday worship service. And please join in our beginning hymn. Our beginning hymn comes from the United Methodist Hymnals, number 384, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. stand and join in our call to worship our call to worship comes from psalm number 133 the wonderful psalm of ascents and how fitting it is that god gave us this call to worship today please respond to my saying how good and pleasant it is It is like precious oil poured on the head. Running down on Aaron's beard. It is as, as if the dew of Hermon. For there the Lord bestows his blessing. Amen. Please remain standing as we give our offering and our gifts to our Lord. I 
pray for our offering and this worship service today. Dear gracious, wonderful, and loving Father, thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. It is truly beautiful. It is a sight to behold. It is a sight to behold because we see your love. We see your presence. We feel your presence here today. Thank you, Lord God, for everyone who is joining via online and also in this church parking lot today. Thank you, Lord God, that we can enjoy this nice, cool summer breeze. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the food to eat, the roofs over our heads, the shelter, Lord God, that we need in these times. I pray, Lord God, that you take these gifts, these offerings to you. Thank you, Lord God, that you only require so little when you give everything to us. May we be reminded, Lord God, that you are giver of all as we give our offerings to you. Be with me as I speak. May the Spirit work within me. And Lord God, may you guide me. And may I speak the truth, Lord God, in this message that you are using me to proclaim. And Lord God, I pray that you be with the people here, that the Holy Spirit move, that they will find the rest that they need, the hope that they need the peace that they need in this time. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6. It's Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. This is the word of God for the people of God. So... There are some life lessons that we can learn uh, just throughout living life. I think one of the real important life lessons that we can learn uh, through living life is how to love. It's really funny how I see my children and I'm reminded of what I thought love was when I was a child and then what I figure uh, I'm try still trying to figure out but as I got older and I matured and life kind of took its course on how different loving God was it's really important for us to understand what love is properly and this is why I have this seemingly unrelated it seems that love is unrelated to our touchstone which is scripture but I would like to make the argument today that it is so related. In fact, I would like to make the argument that we cannot truly love God unless we have Scripture as our touchstone. Our basis for our love for God comes from the very words that God inspired people, God told people to write. We have this in verse 6, these commandments, basically the commandments that Moses uh, was relaying to the next generation of people as the Israelites were out of slavery from Egypt and had the land of Canaan across the river Jordan in their sights. And Moses says, because God and the Spirit so moved Moses to say these commandments that I give you today are to be in your hearts. That all the rules, and by the way, these commandments are not just based on rules. It's also based on a wonderful story of God delivering his people out of the land of slavery into the land of promise. And he says, I give you today are to be in your hearts. 
impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them down on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Moses in his final speech, because this is now when he knows, because God told him that he ain't going to be crossing into the promised land, not his generation. He knows that this is it. And these are his final words that he gives to the next generation. Is to keep these commands that the Lord gives. So why is this then related to love? Because the more important verse in this chapter of Deuteronomy 6 is not verse 6, but actually the highlight of this verse is verses 4 and 5. It's simply known as the Shema. Shema means listen or hear. And this is what verse 4 says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. So it is in the context of loving God in which Moses says to the next generation of people, Take these commandments that I give you today and may they be in your hearts. Inscribe them in your hearts. Live with them daily. Impress them on them and to your children. So what does scripture have to do with love and our life of faith? What is the relationship between Bible and faith? Why do we need the Bible to really truly enjoy living out our faith? First of all, I want to make a distinction here. I think sadly a lot of people fail to make the distinction between salvation and living out the life, a newfound life that we have in Christ. What I am preaching about today is not about salvation, but about fully enjoying the life that we have. Because part of the gospel message is not just about going to heaven. No, the gospel message is that in our lives right now that we can have a reunification with God, our maker, that we can live a life of relationship with God. That's the purpose of the gospel message, or that is one of the greater purposes of the message. So today, I'm not talking about you need to learn scripture to get salvation, although understanding salvation, you can't understand it without scripture. What I'm trying to say is how then do we live a life of faith and why is scripture so important? It comes down to understanding what love is. See, when I was young, and I could see this, so I know my kids are here, uh, and I, I, I don't know, for some reason, I just, I grew up in a pastor's home, so my grandfather was a pastor of a mega church, and so he basically preached about me all the time, he used me as examples all the time, so, you know, I'm sure my kids can handle it, I was fine, I had thousands of people, like, know every in and out of me, and I, I grew up fine under God's grace, so I'm assuming it's the same, that God will grant the same mercies to my children. But anyway, it was my wife's birthday yesterday. And my children love my wife. They love mommy. So, you know, the moment I told her, uh, told them in the morning, today's mommy's birthday, my youngest daughter was like, oh my gosh, I need to get her a gift. So she runs inside, scrambles in her room and searches for this bracelet. I think it's a bracelet made for a doll, not human beings. Because that is the itchiest and sharpest bracelet ever. But with an act of love, she gives it to my wife and say, Mommy, happy birthday. And my wife, being the wonderful mother she is, she had that on for the whole day. Now, funny thing is, every time she tried to hug me or every time I tried to hug her, that thing would scratch me. And I'm like, oh my goodness. See, the funny thing is, as a child, your definition of love is sort of, I think that this person would want. So they make an assumption and they make that assumption based on what they think it, what love is. But then, you know, life takes its course. Life took its course for me. And I remember when I first got married. So I come from a culture and I come from a family background where we're very driven people. And the friends that I, were, I was hanging out with, our goal in life was to make it. We were supposed to be the fat cats. We were supposed to live in the penthouses in downtown Seoul. Uh, that was our thing. 
So I was on track to do those things. And when I first got married with my wife, instead of asking my wife what she really wanted from her husband, I made the silly assumption of what love was. I thought loving my wife was to provide nice things for her. So as I was working, I was working a good 120, 140 hours a week. I do not know how it's possible, but if you're in Korea, you just kind of work like that. That's just the norm. And when you work that much, they obviously pay you that much more too. So I thought I was being a very good husband. I thought I was being a loving husband because when my wife said she was cold, I made sure I got her the darn best jacket possible. I would order the most expensive jacket in the states and have it get shipped over to Korea and I say I provide for her. I thought providing and loving my wife meant that we would be living in a nice posh neighborhood, a very wealthy neighborhood in downtown Seoul in the center of everything. I thought that was love. So I thought I was doing a very good job of loving my wife. I thought every time she would be crying because keep in mind when you're working 120 hours you're really not seeing your wife. But she was crying to me and she was complaining to me and I'd say, what is wrong with you? I'm giving you all these nice things. I'm loving you. Can't you see that? But the thing is, she didn't need the nice jacket. She didn't need the nice apartment that we were living in. What she needed was her husband. But I didn't listen because I didn't ask her. And that's the same thing. Sometimes when it comes to loving God, we kind of make our own definition of what it is to love God through our own selves. It's easy because in hindsight, when I look at my life then, and my marriage was about to fall apart then, and when I look at hindsight, the reason why things were falling apart was because I actually used my love for my wife as justification for my own actions and my own greed. And a lot of times in our faith, that's what happens. That's why we see such atrocities. Atrocities happen and occur under the guise of being good Christians. It's because when we have our own definitions, when we make our own definitions of what love is, then we fail. We fail to truly love God. And that's why it's important when it comes to scripture, that we understand the holistic image of what it is. It says in verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That means that loving God, the center, the locus of focus, is not on us, but it is on God. Our God, the Lord, is one. It is not these many idols that we have around here. It is not money. It is not the house that we live in. It is not our children. But our focus ought to be on God and God alone. And the only way to know what God wants, the only real true way to make love and to really understand what love is, is not to have your own definition of love, but listen to that other person. And to do something about that love after you know it. That's why it's important in our living of faith. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. How do you do that? The first step doesn't start with, okay, what is in my heart? What is in my soul? What is in my strength? That's not the first step. The first step is understanding what God wants. That's why Moses makes this statement. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. What God wants, learn what God wants. Through the words that I'm saying and what we have now as scripture, learn what God wants and put them in your hearts. Impress them on your children. And here's the kicker, and here's the beautiful thing about Scripture and about living faith. She says, talk about them when you sit at home. Talk about them. Gee, Scripture is not made to, meant to be read alone and have personal devotions. That's not what God intended. God intended us to share our thoughts 
to share our struggles. Because let me tell you something. The more and more I read scripture, the more and more I feel, I, I see my shortcomings as a man, as a pastor. I see my shortcomings. But then again, at the same time, that's when I recognize so much more of God's grace and love. It's really funny how when I see how ugly I am, then I finally realize how truly beautiful I am. And that is the power of the word of God. But it's not something to be just taken internally. It's supposed, it's meant to be talked among each other. Impress them on your children. Talk about your faith to your children and one amongst each other. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. It's really important that we understand how to love God. And loving God starts at truly understanding what God wants. And that comes from Scripture. Tie them as symbols on your hands. By the way, the Shema, this Hear, O Israel, is the, is the quintessential Jewish expression of who they are. It's their Jewish identity. I remember hearing a story from a rabbi how in World War II, they had to figure out if these two German uh, Jewish people were Jewish or Nazi spies. And the way that they would understand is they would say, hey, say the Shema. And if they could say it, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu, if they could say it perfectly, then they knew for sure and certain that they were Jewish. So it is a quintessential part of the Jewish identity. So much so that they actually take this literally. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead, foreheads. There's actually a Jewish ritual in the prayers. They're supposed to say the Shema, uh, Shema's, uh, the Shema every morning, I think afternoon and evening. I'm sorry if you are from a Jewish heritage, if I got it wrong, my apologies. But anyway, they have something called the Tefillin. And it's literally a box with scripture, scrolls in them. And they literally bind them on their forehead. And they bind them on their arms. So if you actually go to the Jerusalem uh, temple in the wall and you see the Jewish people praying, you're going to see this little black box on their forehead and on their arms. They take this literally. Now, I'm not going to say we need to do quite that. That's not, that's not, you know, what it's about. I personally don't think that's what Jesus was talking about. Jesus would pre be preaching. But at the same time, that's how closely we ought to live in Scripture. And we have to understand the importance of Scripture because that is what is going to give us the tools to truly love God. Loving God is the greatest commandment. In the story, in the gospel according to Matthew, someone asks Jesus in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And this is what Jesus says. Jesus... Sorry. There we go. So teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? That's what someone asked Jesus. And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Exact words mentioned in Deuteronomy. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The greatest commandment is not to love our neighbors as ourselves. It is to love our Lord, our God, with all our hearts and with all our soul and all our strength. Now keep in mind, if we truly love the Lord and we read scripture and we read God's commandments, then we quickly realize that part of the big, a very, very big deal of the commandments is love your neighbor as yourself. So you're technically not, you can't do the first commandment without the second one. So it doesn't make sense that you say you love God and you don't love your neighbors. It, it doesn't make sense. But if you are saying that you love your neighbors without really understanding what God wants and God's love is and God's sense of justice, then we're really not loving our neighbors. And that's why it's really important for us to understand Scripture. And this is the final installment of our sermon series about our touchstones and scripture before someday the spirit will move me again where we can revisit this in even more detail 
but is that we bind Scripture to our hearts. We have them in our forehead. It's where we think, right? The Jewish people, the culture in the ancient Near East, they expressed emotions and things with analogies. So to do it in your hands, that means everything that you do, you do things with your hands, everything that you touch, you are to be reminded of God. Everything that you think about, we ought to be reminded of the Lord. And that comes through Scripture. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I know it's difficult to do. The Bible is a difficult book to understand. Although, it's, it's a miracle how even as a child, it's so incredibly difficult to understand. Yet, when I read some verses, I knew that God was speaking to me. So, and sometimes scripture is very difficult because, I mean, there's other things in life. But if we are to confess that we truly love the Lord and we want to live a life of faith, if we want to truly follow the greatest commandment of loving God and loving our neighbor, then it has to start at scripture. That's why I'm so excited to be a pastor of this congregation. Because when I first got the call from our district superintendent about coming here, I did what any guest would do that comes to our church. I went to our church website. And I was scrolling down because I wanted to see the mission statement. I couldn't find the mission statement. We're going to address that later. But I scrolled down and I saw our touchstones. And the first thing that I saw was scripture. And that's when I knew that uh, God was going to do wonderful things with this church. Because the very foundations of this church is based on understanding th that things are, everything comes from Scripture first. Now, how we apply it, that is a process that we have to work on together. There is no right way. We just merely try and prayerfully discern that we do things the right way. But our starting point needs to be Scripture. Because that is our way to live a life of faith. So pray, pray. May this be our prayer theme of the week. That God be able to move us so that Scripture takes hold of our hearts. Because there is no story that is more beautiful, that is more raw and visceral. There is no story that shakes the foundations of people than the very words that God so inspired so many people to write. And may we keep those commandments, these stories that we have today, and may it be in our hearts. Let us pray. Dear gracious and loving God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us scripture. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us your word. Lord God, we admit sometimes your word is hard to understand. Your word is difficult to fathom in so many levels. Sometimes we don't understand the story. But Lord God, through our meditation of Scripture, may we learn, may we learn more of what it is to love you, to live a life that you want us to live and to live a life of faith. I pray all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. No power? Oh, I think that's unplugged. Can you guys hear me in the radio? You can hear me in the radio? Okay, something got unplugged. Is it, is it on? All the wonders of trying to do outdoor worship service. <laughs> okay. Well, let us take this time to pray. Oh, we got her. Okay. All right, let's uh, sing our hymn of response as we respond to the words uh, that God has shown us today.
Let us take this time to pray for those around us. If you know someone who is going through physical pain, if you know someone who is going through a surgery, if you know someone who is sick, let's take this time to truly put into loving our neighbor into an action. And let us pray for that person by name. Also continue to pray for our school system and the schools and the parents who are deciding whether it's safe for them to send their children and also for our church preschool as well. That God give us the discernment to do what is right and to lead the children safely. Let us take this time to pray. And now let us end our prayers with the words that our Lord Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please receive this benediction as we are sent out to those around us, to our families, and to our loved ones. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, please stay around and have a brief time of fellowship with each other, greet each other, and uh, wait for me. So